Hey, what's up guys? I'm Sarika and welcome back to my YouTube channel, Your Knowledge Buddy. If my videos are helping you, please do consider liking it as it will help me with YouTube algorithm. Today's topic is how to start your career in IT. And if you're wondering why are we talking about IT? Mainly for two reasons, more jobs and good salary. More jobs, how? The technology is changing every day and touching more parts of every day's life. It's clear that it's opening more and more job opportunities. Hence, due to sudden boom in IT job, there is more demand and we have less skilled people all over the world. Number two, good salary. As compared to other jobs in the market, IT pays a good salary even at the entry level. Before we get into the details, today's video is sponsored by Datacamp. If you have not heard of Datacamp, they are the first online learning platform that focuses on building the best learning experience for data science. And also Datacamp teaches companies and individuals the skills they need to work with data in the real world. It has close to 350 courses focusing on variety of data science technologies from R language, Python to spreadsheets and Excel. If you are a complete beginner or have a good level of knowledge on subjects related to data science, then this platform will have something for you. So invest in yourself and use my link in the description and check out the first chapter of any course for free. So let's dive into the details now. How to start or switch your career in IT? I know the first question which comes to your mind is, do I need a degree to get a job in IT? The answer is simply no. Gone are the days when you needed bachelors in technology to start your career in IT. Companies like Google, Apple, Starbucks, IBM, Bank of America and many more companies have publicly announced that they consider employees with certifications more qualified and no longer require college degrees. They want to see how you apply your knowledge at work. Let's understand now what types of jobs are available in IT. Many think of IT as a field for programmers. You will be thrilled to know that there's a role for everyone in IT because it's such a broad field and it covers jobs ranging from business analyst to solution architect. But before we understand the various roles we have in IT and what skills and certifications are needed, let's understand software lifecycle which is known as SDLC. So SDLC stands for Software Development Lifecycle. It is a process for planning, creating, testing and deploying a software. It consists of five stages. Stage one is requirements gathering, which is done by business analyst. Stage two is design, which is done by solution designer or architect. Stage three is development by developers. Stage four is testing done by tester. Stage five is deployment done by developer or release team. So there are different roles in IT, technical versus non-technicals. Example of few technical roles are like IT support analyst, a desktop analyst, developers on any job like R language or Python, architects, cloud engineer. Example of non-technical roles are like business analyst, system analyst, project manager, scrum master, test analyst, and the list goes on and on. I have picked top eight roles to discuss in little detail. So let's start with technical role. So number one on my list is IT desktop or support analyst. So who are they? They're responsible for building and installing PCs, telephone systems, wireless networks, and devices such as printers, scanners, mobile related to desktop infrastructure. The average salary in UK is 32,000 pound per year. Skills needed, good technical bent of mind. In terms of certification, you can start with CompTIA A+, ITIL Foundation, or Google IT Support Professional Certificate. Role number two, developers. Who are they? A person who writes code backend for many kinds of software and are responsible for the design, testing, and maintenance of software programs, also known as computer programmer, software developer, or a coder. The average base salary for them in UK is 38,000 pounds per year. Skills needed are coding skills. In terms of certifications, each language got its own certifications like Java, Oracle Certified Associate, Java SE8, Programmer Certification for Python, PCPP1 and 2 for C++, C++ Certified Professional Programmer. Role number three, Cloud Engineer. Who are they? A person responsible for assessing a business infrastructure and migrating different functions to a cloud-based and maintaining and supporting it. The average base salary in UK is £45,000 per year. 
Skills needed are definitely coding skills. Now, in terms of certification, AWS certification. If you are new to cloud, start with certified cloud practitioner followed by solution architect. Number two, Azure Cloud Certification by IBM. Number three, Google Certified Professional GCP. Role number four, data analyst or data scientist. Who are they? A data scientist role combines computer science, stats, and maths. They analyze, process, and model data, then interpret the results so that their organizations can make strategic decisions. The average base salary in UK for data analyst is £41,000 and for data scientists it's £47,000 per year. Skills needed are programming skills and analytical skills. In terms of certifications, you can learn programming language R or Python. Also, you can enroll for Google's data analytics course which is a complete package for beginners. Now, let's look at few non-technical roles. So, number one on my list is business analyst. Who are they? They're someone who understands the business requirement, language, and can easily translate to the developers. The average base salary in UK is £40,000 per year. Skills needed are good communicator, analytical skills, problem solving, stakeholder management. In terms of certifications, so if you are in UK and rest of the world, Europe, you should be having a diploma in business analysis from BCS, which is British Computer Society. For US and Asia, start preparing for CBAP, which is Certified Business Analysis Professional. Now, role number two, project manager. So who are they and what they do? They are someone who are responsible for planning, organizing, allocating resources, budgeting, and successfully executing a project. Such projects might include, say, software and app development or hardware installation or anything. The average base salary for them in UK is £45,000 per year. Now, skills needed for them are like leadership skills, negotiating skills, risk management, time management, good communication skills, and definitely stakeholder management skills. In terms of certifications for UK, US, and Asia, Princeton Foundation and Practitioner. For UK and Europe, APM, PMQ, which is Association for Project Management Qualification. Now, goal number three, test analyst. Who are they? The person responsible for testing of the code done by the developer. In short, they need to do it. Quality check and find bugs in the software. The average base salary for them is £37,000 per year. Skills needed are attention to detail, analytical skills, logical thinking, and need to challenge developers. In terms of certifications, Certified Tester Foundation Level, CTFL, from ISTQB, the International Software Testing Qualifications Board. Certified Software Tester, CST, from Software Certifications, a division of the Quality Assurance Institute. Role number four, Scrum Master. Who are they and what they do? Scrum Master is responsible for promoting and supporting the Scrum team. The average base salary for Scrum Master in UK is £50,000 per year. Skills needed are facilitate meetings, conflict resolutions, coaching agile practices, removing blockers and influencing your stakeholders and your team. In terms of certification, you can start with Professional Scrum Master PSM1 followed by PSM2 and PSM3. And after that, you can start looking into Safe for Scrum Master and Safe for Advanced Scrum Master. So this brings me to the end of this video. If my videos are helping you, please do consider liking it as it will help me with YouTube algorithm. Thanks for watching my video till the end and I'll see you soon with my next video. Till then, keep learning.